So hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So what I have here today is the 2024 Dongfang Olius Huge Hybrid. So this is Dongfang's first hybrid vehicle here in the Philippines. So again, I'd like to thank everyone here at Dongfang Alabang, to Dongfang Motors Philippines, and to Sir Nino Rico for making this review possible. Let's talk about the looks immediately with this uh, Olius Huge Hybrid. Apologies if I keep messing the pronunciation. Doesn't it look like a Toyota Rush that's been... I mean, if you squint a bit, look at it from the side. Yes, it does look like a Toyota Rush that's been... If you know, you know. Just comment down below. So you get decent amount of ground clearance here. And being a, well, luxury Chinese uh, SUV. I'll get more on that later on too. There's a lot of chrome here in the grill. Kind of gives it at least a distinct look for this uh, huge hybrid. I just call it that from now on. People don't know about this. Uh, All use is actually a sub-brand of Dongfang uh, Motors and it's pretty interesting they decided to combine all the names all together too and I like that all of your LED lights, even for the all-use badge, is just one long piece over here. So again, you get LED lights and turn signal lights and the party piece of this all-use hybrid is the engine. Since being a hybrid vehicle, and to once I was doing my B-roll shots of this, the engine hood is really, really heavy. So quality, I don't think there's an issue with this all this huge hybrid, even for the interior, which we'll get to in a bit. So pairing this thing is a one and a half liter turbocharged four cylinder engine, yet again mated to a hybrid system. So the engine alone produces 174 horsepower, but for the combined figure, you have a total of 241 horsepower and 540 newton meters of torque. The figures alone, and again, with the size of this being a compact crossover, this is a direct rival to the GWM Haval H6 hybrid. So I have a full review of that. Check that out too on my channel. I did hail that and as too many too, that is one of the best hybrid vehicles at the moment in our market. So I want to see how this will uh, compare now. And interesting enough, being a hybrid vehicle, the range of this is pretty immense too. So with the electric motor combined with the fuel, you have a total range of 1,250 kilometers, which is pretty insane already. And two, as you can see in the B-rolls earlier, there's max badges all over the engine. And here too, on the garnish here on the side profile, that's actually the brand of engine for, again, the all-use brand. I really can't stand how heavy this engine hood is. So I don't think you will have an issue in the long term with this huge hybrid. So on the side profile too, it's your usual uh, conventional crossover, LED repeaters with cameras underneath. And this is the first crossover, well Chinese crossover rather, that has Pirelli Scorpion tires. And as well you get interesting sets of wheels too. One thing that got my curiosity, so we have an empty stretch of road and I want to know how fast this can go from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour. 3, 2, 1, go. Okay, that's actually pretty quick. Why? This is just a closed road. 9.39 seconds. That's pretty quick. <laughs> so here now at the rear of the all this huge hybrid, so you get a lot of badges here. And unlike some with uh, other Chinese competitors, you have a full LED light bar, which is very good. However, though, like with some of the br other brands too, well, in general, you have fake exhaust over here. But then again, I'm getting used to it already. And then open the boot up too. You can adjust the speed of the tailgate too in the infotainment system. So this is the speed where it was set. So being two AGW H6 uh, hybrid rivals, the boot space is actually slightly bigger only. So this is around like 700 liters. There's no official figures given by Dongfang Motors Philippines. But at least underneath you have a space saver. Oh, never mind. There's no spare tire, but you get your tire repair kit and a Jamo subwoofer. Okay, I didn't expect that. Not even the rivals have this feature. So, not even cubby spaces over here. And as you can see, the load lip is pretty high because yet again, being a hybrid, all of the batteries are stored underneath here. Well, I can see a tonneau cover slots here, but it's not present here in this uh, exact unit. So, finally, with all of the seats down too, again, slightly larger than the Haval H6. And unlike with some other brands too, I'm not sure with the GWMs, I've yet to try it again. The anti-pinch feature of this is really good. So you don't have to put enough force to 
stop the tailgate so yeah that's about it with the exterior the boot and the engine of this all your huge hybrid let's check out the interior oh no so this is the interior of the Dongfang Olius Huge Hybrid. Right, sitting here and first impressions immediately. This feels really, really premium. I'm really surprised with the what the quality, the fit and finish. Yeah, I'm. I, I actually dig this. So as well, this is one of the first Chinese brands to offer two interior color options. But I really like this two-tone uh, white and blue, dark blue setup. So. In, the setup also will continue here in the door card and listen to this door tattoo that sounds really good and then you have squeegee material and then leather so pads all around the only plastic here is below the door card where you have cubby spaces cup holders on either side and just below here too in the uh, center console but everything else so lovely to touch even above here is all squeegee material and i love the right side of the uh, dashboard it has this nice hump over here which again gives it more premium touches than usual what i like around the window switches yes it's plastic but there's like that brushed effect dong fang did a really really good job setting up the interior of this so here on the left side you get that nice design again on the dashboard you have two blank buttons only but at least you have one two functioning buttons for your electronic tailgate your headlight leveler adjustment and one cubby space down below and then steering wheel here surprisingly it's a flat bottom and i like the sides are all swell dark blue then here are your buttons on the left side you have your cruise control and your voice command buttons and on the right side you have adjustments for your instrument cluster and speaking of this interior is dominated by two 12.3 inch screens so here's for your instrument cluster and two here are your driving modes it's a swivel wheel like with european cars so you have eco normal and sport mode just one nitpick only i wish it changes color or the displays itself when you change driving modes but that's mainly it and then here in your other 12.3 inch screen here for your infotainment system this has apple carplay i'll get more on that later on so you get a 360 degree view camera too which is actually among one of the better quality in any other chinese brands i've encountered again very good and then here are more safety bits and other things you can do with this all this huge hybrid which i really commend to and then further down you have touch sensitive air conditioning controls along with your heating functions too and then you have your engine start stop button here and why i mentioned i'll get back to apple carplay so open this glove box up okay the space there is decent but you have this device over here this is how you connect apple carplay but as far as i know i did see one other chinese brand that was able to do this but it can connect to android auto so yet again we will know in the future if this really has a uh, apple carplay only back there and then here in the center console in front you have a wireless charging pad which fits my phone and further behind you have your gear shift electronic parking brake auto hold function a tray for your two cup holders and again your diving modes and i like in the gear shift there's an all use embossment just above it it's as well leather even this center console box is dark blue leather again space in there is pretty decent and you have a cooling function too which i really really like and then further down you have a cubby space with a usb port and a 12 volt socket and big highlight for me here too besides the uh, panoramic sunroof the controls are here too with your led lights and then sun visor with a vanity mirror with halogen light uh, don't extend anyways again the other big highlight for me in the interior of this are the seats yet again it's the two-tone dark blue and white and then you have electronic adjustments for both front seats sadly you only get lumbar support for this driver seat but it makes up for it in the passenger side you have electronic adjustment for your tire support which is really really good and actually it's probably one of the biggest ones i've ever encountered so far too so yeah that's about here in front of this all use huge uh, sorry all use huge hybrid oh one more thing there's a jam speaker just in front of the dashboard too so that's about here in front of this all use huge hybrid let's check out the rear seats so these are the rear seats of the all use huge hybrid so here in the door card exactly the same like the ones in front but smaller cubby spaces now but at least you still get cup holders on either side 
the, the rear actually sounds a little bit better than the one in front so you get LED lights on either side above here and space here in the back surprisingly really good so feet room knee room and headroom despite the sunroof this is my headroom by the way i'm 5'4 yeah it's really spacious in here i think this is just a little bit spa uh, more spacious than the gwm haval h6 hybrid and like with that car too sitting here in the middle there's no transmission tunnel whatsoever it's a completely flat floor and yeah a little bit stiffer to sit here in the middle than in either side of the seat but still very much comfortable and two you get a central armrest with two cup holders there's no grips around them though but anyways at least there still is and then coat hanger and then grab handle and then here you get two map pockets behind brown front seats and then in the middle you have two air conditioning vents a usb port and a cubby space for your phone so yeah that's pretty much it here in the interior of this all new all use huge hybrid i'm actually excited to dive this let's go for a drive few more things i uh, need to confirm surprisingly you get seat warmers and seat ventilation so which is very good at this price point and i can confirm now well we can confirm this has android auto no wonder that device looked very familiar in that brand i mentioned good to know you have at least both apple carplay and android auto so here first impressions we're gonna drive this starting with eco mode first and the engine is on so you get corner camera too which surprisingly it's already feature pack it's got literally everything you need already see the image here too the corner camera okay that's just in eco mode okay pretty decent so let's go now to okay let's go straight to sport mode but first impressions here actually eco mode this thing is really light the NVH is surprisingly solid so here sport mode there's region braking too no wonder brakes the brakes feel a little bit weird only but that's a given characteristic with uh, hybrid vehicles wow in sport mode this is an animal i just literally skidded it too and surprising at higher speeds already not much tires translating into the cabin even though you have wide tires and as well purely tires yeah this is this is actually one of the better chinese crossovers I've surprisingly tried out and yeah in sport mode too uh, the engine is literally just on the whole time so let's try smart mode uh, yeah smart mode basically uh, normal slash comfort mode and then here's auto hold function too let's try that out I want to see the transition too from at a standstill this is just slightly better than the Haval A6 in terms of NVH and uh, performance yes I know the Haval H6 has tire noise too but this has a bit uh, better deadening too and you're yeah, just sitting here in the cabin is is actually pretty nice here it's, it feels a bit more premium than usual and then here oh the engine just kicked it oh my gosh wow this thing's nuts off the line yeah even with the auto hold on and the engine off just running on the electric motor and the engine firing up wow that's pretty solid not to my surprise and then here normal mode with the with the drive mode okay the thing just lightened up compared to one in sport mode oh my gosh <laughs> this is lightning quick wow yeah there's a bit body in here there but again it's surprisingly not so bad and I this this have sir region braking yes. the levels yes also you can adjust region braking levels too well not quite surprised so I'm just literally uh what is this for vlogging purposes only my feet's off I'm not touching the brake whatsoever so I think this is around level two of uh, region braking yeah it stops on the time too yeah the brakes actually it's really stiff now it wasn't having the long travel earlier and then maneuverability okay just watch out as well for the long mode yet again since this has a well i mean not a big engine but there's a lot going on the engine base since you're holding the turbocharged engine and the electric motors itself okay, let's start sport mode again let's actually like this oh it's getting it. wow wow jeez this is so peppy wow i would say too, this handles as well a little bit better than the haval h6 and surprisingly a little bit more sportier too than usual jesus 
Having 540 newton meters on the top, wow, that's pretty amazing. Oh, so the, like, there's a speed warning detector here that's illuminating in the instrument cluster. Oh my gosh, that's so fast. Right. <laughs> Actually, this car exceeded all of my expectations for now. But I'm really curious now since having driven an elect uh, hybrid electric vehicle now. I want to see how the 14 Friday, the full EV will drive like so. Hopefully I can drive that soon too on my channel. But this one, having just having a glimpse of what the EV will drive like. Yeah, I love, I really love this all this huge hybrid. What's the price of this again sir? Uh, for this one sir is uh, 1.880. Wow, 1.8 million pesos. So again, the price point is somewhat exactly the same too like with the Haval H6 but I think this is better equipped you get more features as well two safety features you get a lot more for your money yeah this is actually one of the best value pack now hybrid electric vehicles out there so the engines off now remember there's no tachometers you just see the power meter over here and I'm just driving around here with my driving style FYA and this is a hybrid vehicle I've been averaging what it says here. Oops, wait, that's the wrong button. 17 kilometers per liter. With my driving style alone, okay, that's a, I think a little bit close to with the Haval A6. But have, if I have a chance to have a proper land out of this, I think I can achieve the what like what I've been achieving with the Haval A6 of 19 kilometers per liter in the city and 23 in the highway. So yeah, that's what about it with this. What? Actually, what a beast of a car, this flight. And to the suspension, despite being a hybrid electric vehicle, which tend to be a little bit more stiffer than usual, having, again, the batteries underneath, it's really comfortable. Surprising. Yes, it's just slightly stiff only, but it soaks up the bumps and hops pretty well. And this, I don't even know what transmission this is. Maybe this is a dedicated hybrid transmission because it only says a multi high performance on the brochure. But I know this is a DHT, but there's no uh, gearing whatsoever like with every other hybrid vehicle because there's no paddle shifters and manual mode here whatsoever. 1,880,000 pesos. I think this is probably the new best bang for the buck hybrid electric vehicle. So yeah. I'd like to thank again Dongfang Alabang, Dongfang Motors Philippines, and to Sir Nino Rico over here for making this review possible. So, hopefully we'll get our hands soon too on the 4th Friday electric vehicle. So, hope you guys like and subscribe, and I will see you hopefully in the future too with more Dongfang reviews. Bye-bye.